Alright, so one of the conditions on me working for Constellation is that I need that fancy suit over here. Sarah, I appreciate it. This is gonna go a long way for us exploring and getting to the bottom of these artifacts. Let's get out of here. Hey, Hill. Hill here. Gaming. And we are back with more Starfield. Hill here. And we have just, uh, I guess, technically joined Constellation, and our smooth captain here has uh, gotten Sarah to give him some special armor. She unlocked the trophy case. The well's been having brownouts all the time. Mast finally sent someone down there, but nothing's changed. Oh. So we can overhear people's conversations and get missions, all right. So let's see if we can get over here. I don't think this is the right way. Let's go this way. Oh, I got my boost back now. So it just, it just equipped itself. self-reliance in all your actions as members of the United Colonies Navy? I, I do. do. Then I'm proud to welcome you to the Vanguard. Now, you all have your assignments. Get out there and show them what the UC is made of. Supra et ultra. Mm, I can see the appeal. Being back in uniform. Let's go. Welcome to Mast. If you have an appointment, you may proceed inside. If you don't have official business, we ask you remain in the lobby. What is this place? This? This is Mast. The beating heart of the United Colonies. Every decision made in the civilized galaxy takes place inside these walls. Okay, but what is MAST? Is that like an acronym or something? Can't you provide more information than that? What, what, what do you do here anyway? I'm one of MAST's resource officers. Boy. It's my job to ensure those here on official business get where they're going promptly. And that any rule breaking is dealt with swiftly. Mast, mast, mast. I bet you don't even know what it means, what it stands for. Stay safe. Yeah. Come on, Sarah. I think that's your friend over there. I'm not ready to speak to him yet. So what have we got here? Not a whole lot. All right, then. We'll go talk to your friend. Wait a minute. No, I'm not doing that. Yeah. Come on. Hello? My family never had any love for the UC after the Colony War. We'd probably disown me if they knew I was signing up. Hmm, the end of the Earth. 
Oh, wow, there's a exhibit in the hall. Let's see. In 2150, humanity learned the Earth's magnetosphere would collapse sometime in the next half century, eliminating all life on the planet. Decisive action was required, but the secure transport of an entire civilization would demand a new kind of cooperation, a new kind of courage, and a new kind of union. Thus, in 2159, the United Colonies were formed to make that journey possible. Just one year later, the Galileo, the first of many colony ships, touched down here on Jemison, beginning a new era of human history. The age of the United Colonies. The effort and planning it must have taken to evacuate literally the entire planet. Can you imagine? The logistics alone must have been mind-boggling. Hmm. Oh, look at these suits. House Varun. Free Star Collective. And what's this? New factions. You know, I need. I really did need to come down here. You know, your friend can wait. From their foundation, the United Colonies strove to provide all their citizens with opportunity, security, and peace. But there were those among the UC that still wanted something more. Independence. So in 2161, the UC issued the Centaurus Proclamation, granting UC citizens the right to settle distant worlds and form their own sovereign powers. It wasn't long before the first new faction, the Free Star Collective, was formally organized in 2188 later followed by House Varun, revealing themselves to the universe in 2230. The result of the Centaurus proclamation has always left me torn. So much conflict arose as a result. Was it worth it? I like the name of, of the Freestar Collective, but those suits don't look very, uh, Appealing. Does this do something? Oh. Alright, I don't have time to read all this. You gotta be kidding me. And what's this? The Serpent's Crusade. Beginning in 2240. House Varun forces declared all-out war on the rest of human civilization, initiating the Serpent's Crusade. Over the next 23 years, thousands of Freestar, UC, and independent souls were killed by agents of House Varun in the name of their Serpent God. It was only with the death of their founder in 2263 and the succession of his heir, Jarek, that House Varun finally sued for peace. There remains, however, select members of House Varun who refuse to recognize the cessation of hostilities their leaders established. Even after House Varun's mysterious disappearance, these zealots remain a threat to all who encounter them. Their pacification? The goal of all space. Alright, there's more. Conflict among the stars, so this has given me the entire history. Of the many conflicts between the galaxy's factions, none was more brutal than the recent colony war between the UC and the Freestar Collective. Set off by the unauthorized Freestar colonization of Vesta's Pride in 2308, a direct violation of the Nereon Treaty, the colony war spread quickly across the galaxy. Both sides 
deployed every tool at their disposal. Armadas of warships, mechanized combat platforms, or mechs. Even bio-engineered alien creatures. The infamous UC Xeno weapons. It was only in 2311 at the Battle of Cheyenne that the scales finally tipped. The Free Star Collective, utilizing their civilian fleet as a human shield, successfully crippled the superior United Colonies Navy. After their shocking victory against the galaxy's greatest navy, the Free Star Collective offered terms of peace, which the colonies, out of an interest in staving off any further human costs, accepted. The galaxy has been rebuilding ever since. conflict that irreparably wounded the settled systems. <sighs> there were times I felt that it would never end. All right, what have we got here? The Battle of... Is it... I don't know, Naira? Few settled worlds were left untouched by the colony war. But nowhere could the viciousness of modern warfare be seen more clearly than on the Free Star planet of Nira. Nira, okay. Initially occupied by invading United Colonies forces as a forward operating position, repeated attempts to take and retake the planet by collective forces led only to devastation. Swaths of the world were transformed into scorched husks, a nightmarish testament to the depths of human ingenuity and human cruelty. And today, Nira remains a continuing reminder to the horrors of unfettered war. Look, it's a terror morph. I killed one. At level two. I bring her here almost every day to stare at this thing. I can't stop staring at it. A real terror morph. This thing's like an artist's rendition, right? No animal can be this ugly in real life. Oh, trust me, it is. Hey, girl. All four of my last science papers have been on terramorphs. I don't know why. They are quite terrifying and they're hard to kill. Oh, what have we got here, Sarah? In the midst of the colony war, a different kind of tragedy struck the UC city of Londinian. A newly constructed but critical supply center for the United Colonies war effort, Londinian found itself overrun by one of the galaxy's most mysterious predators, the Terramorph. A rare but pervasive threat to all human settled worlds, Terramorphs swept over the city seemingly out of nowhere on a scale never before seen in recorded history. Valiant efforts by the UC military slowed the onslaught, but the creatures proved unstoppable. Ultimately, the decision was made to destroy the Londinian spaceport, sealing off the city, the outbreak, and its citizenry from the galaxy at large. The tragedy of Londinian is mourned by the UC <coughs> to this day. Still can't get over that thing. The Armistice. After the devastation wrought by the Colony War, the UC and the Freestar Collective came together to ratify a treaty that became known as the Armistice. Both sides agreed to a vast reduction in standing forces and that Xeno weapons and mech warfare would be outlawed. All related research was sealed away, accessible only in cases of dire emergency. But the Collective had another demand, that the active commanders of the UC military stand trial for their actions. The United Colonies, in the interest of peace and galactic security, agreed. In 2311, three United Colonies senior officers were found guilty. Commander
Commander Henry Durant, General Indira Rastogi, and Fleet Admiral Francois Senon, known better as Ve Victus. Hmm. All were sentenced to death for their actions, bringing the colony war to a close, and returning peace to the galaxy at long last. I was a strong supporter of the Armistice. All of the terrible weapons that both sides used against one another. It had to end. You know, you can stand closer to me. I don't know why you're like all the way across the room. But by order of armistice, okay. Oh, the vanguard is born. Private sector. Now that's where the real money's at. Oh, really? Problem? No. Somebody need to get that robot. It was into this new world that the Vanguard was born. An official branch of the UC Navy, the Vanguard is the United Colonies Volunteer Fleet, serving a myriad of security, logistical, and reconnaissance roles. And after a sufficient length of service, UC citizenship is guaranteed to every Vanguard member. Open to all captains, regardless of origin, the Vanguard is leading the charge to protect and support the citizens of the United Colonies, wherever in the galaxy they may be. Hmm, I'm thinking I might want to join the Vanguard. citizen no one is born a united colony citizen only through service to the uc can one hope to earn one citizenship but the uc prides itself on taking care of its people cost of living controls mean citizens pay less than their foreign counterparts for needs big and small all citizens are issued a grant upon joining to get themselves on their feet. And only UC citizens have the opportunity to purchase property, getting the chance to live in one of the most beautiful cities in the settled systems. By joining the Vanguard today, you too can begin earning your place here, in the heart of galactic civilization, as a citizen of the United Colonies. So I can see why so many people join the Vanguard. And here we are, the pilot simulator. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> It's restricted. Oh no. So I ha actually have to join to use it. All right, let's go, Sarah. Let's go talk to your friend. So that was uh, very enlightening. Dad wanted me to apply for the administration track at school, but. took the tour. I've learned so much here today. Uh, I guess we go back to the lobby. You know, it's kind of odd that they would put the flight simulator down there in, in the museum. But here we are. Sarah, good to see you. Who's your friend? Hopefully Constellation's newest member. 
thought I'd run through some legwork together. Ah, uh, another space explorer. Hey, you ever think of joining up with the Vanguard? Help the United Colonies I'm thinking earn some about credits? It. Yes. Maybe get your UC citizenship? Yeah. You tell me what the Vanguard is. United Colonies volunteer fleet. Independent captains enlist, get to use their own ships, and the UC provides them with sustained work and credits. Mm. And put in your time, and you're guaranteed UC citizenship and everything that comes with it. Discounts on UC goods and medical services, chance to own a place in New Atlantis. Only way a foreign captain could even dream of seeing those sorts of benefits. So, you want in? Um, well... Yes, but maybe later. We do have some Constellation business to discuss first. All right, all right. Can't blame me for trying, right? Uh, I mean, no, I can't. I still haven't given up on getting Sarah to re-enlist. It's we a game enlist. we play. Huh? Okay. He asks. I say no. Here's what I got for you two. Vanguard volunteer by the name of Moera. Helps patrol the old neighborhood. Sol, Mars, Neptune, you know. The Sol system? Which Admiral did he upset to get that posting? He's Martian, born and raised. Not like I can get anyone else to care. Word is he's got some fancy metal ornament he's been showing off to the old grounders. Really? Matches that description Sarah gave me. Oh, oh, I see. A scientific discovery being used as an ornament. The indignity. Hey. Vanguards risk their lives every day to keep people safe. So what if he doesn't understand whatever this fancy thing of yours is? Easy there, John. We all have our sore points. Everyone agrees we need to talk to your Vanguard about what he found. Let's leave it at that. All right. I'll let it slide. No good for the recruiting office to be seen arguing with the civs anyway. Soul System is a lot of planets, but a vet like Moera will be checking in at Sidonia on the regular. You mean hitting the bars, don't you, John? Hey, nothing wrong with a little refresh between patrols. Hmm. Anything you can tell me about Sidonia? Yeah, bring a coloring book. You get so used to seeing red, you'll forget what blues and greens look like. Oh, you're funny. Did Moera say where he found this ornament of his? You'll have to ask him, but Vanguard volunteers have retrieval rights if they get into a scrap. Wouldn't be surprised if he found it off of a pirate or something like that. All right, well, thank you for all your help. Anything for Sarah. UC always takes care of its own. Even the prodigal children. No, oh, brother. I'm serious about that recruitment offer, by the way. You just come talk to me when you're ready. UC is a good friend to have. I can imagine. I thought I asked about this dude in, in, uh, who, who do I need to ask? now. Oh, were we supposed to talk to him first and, and then take the tour? Hey, Sarah's friend. You come to enlist at long last? Start earning your stripes with the Vanguard? Um, well, what sort of work would I be doing if I enlisted? Vanguard work is as needed. When we've got jobs, we'll make them available to you. But the work itself, well, it runs the gamut. Sometimes you might be hunting down hostile ships on behalf of the UC Navy, or you might be called up to help the science division clean up some invasive species. Hell, we've even been asked to help take on the occasional terramorph. No, oh, great. And sometimes we just need cargo support. Not every job's glamorous. The Vanguard only gets called in for the ones where there's a chance of seeing action. Wherever the UC needs us, the Vanguard is there. Why would I want to become a UC citizen? Well, other than becoming a member of the greatest faction in the galaxy, you'd get access to discounted services on any UC world. 
Credits to help you get on your feet. You'd even be able to buy property right here in New Atlantis. Citizenship unlocks it all, and signing up for the Vanguard is the fastest way to earn it. All right, I'm game. Just tell me what I need to do next. Well, all right. Take the elevator down to the Vanguard Orientation Hall. You can get started at any of the registration terminals. The system will walk you through the rest. And if you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Or, I'm sorry, but this sounds like a, a very nice offer. Been a long time since I've been to Mars. Soul system doesn't get a lot of traffic. Goodbye. So I can dismiss you. Didn't know that. Wait. Um. Okay, well, I guess we'll catch up later. Oh, there you are. What? Whoa. Oh, this must be the registration terminal. Okay, to register for my examination, please select Enlist Agreement. Okay. By joining the United Colonies Vanguard, you agree to perform necessary services for the United Colonies that could place you in serious danger resulting in harm to your craft or yourself, up to and including death. All right, I agree. All right, I may proceed to the examination chamber through the orientation hall. Welcome, please proceed through the orientation hall to the examination chamber. Registration accepted. You may now proceed through the historical displays in the orientation hall or continue on to the examination. All right, well, we, we did this in the wrong order, but I didn't know I was gonna try to join. I really hope this is just a phase. So now will I be able to use the flight simulator? Yes. I've spent a fair bit of time in simulators just like these. They're startlingly realistic. Have fun. Thank you, Sio. This is the Mark 18 Flight Simulation Chamber applicant, currently in orbit around a high-detail recreation of a remote world. When you're ready to begin, please take a seat in the pilot's chair. is simple. Defeat as many tiers of opponents as you can before your ship is disabled. You must defeat at least three tiers of opponents to pass the exam. Good hunting, applicant. What, what do tiers mean? Like three ships or three waves? New targets active. I guess we'll find out.
let me get myself a, a shield upgrade. Can I have more than one? Shield upgrade active. Damage upgrade active. Simulation reset. Prepare for your first opponent. Oh, look at this. I got full shields now. New targets active.
Do I wish to leave? The current pass and score will be recorded, but all progress in the simulator will be lost. Congratulations, applicant. You've passed. You can head up to Commander Tuwala to receive your final results and your probationary assignment. Or you're welcome to take another run at the simulation if you'd like to try and earn a better score. We'll only keep your best run. Good showing in there, applicant. All right, thank you. Sarah, let's go. Thought you were running to congratulate me. Who's back? Everything go all right with the exam? Or did you have some questions you needed answered first? Um, I wrapped up my pilot training exam and they told me to come back here. Ah, so these are your numbers that just came through then. You ready to hear how you did? Mm. I'm game. It's a cute test, by the way. Nothing like real combat, but cute. I'll let the techs know you think so highly of their work, and make a note you've got prior combat experience. So, looking at the data? Checked out a few of the murals. Good. A test of preparation and thoroughness. Two traits the Vanguard values highly. Your physiological results are... eerily calm. Not a vital spike to be seen. You really know how to keep your cool. Exactly what the Navy's looking for in our recruits. Oh, you found the debug system in the simulator. Nicely done. Curiosity and resourcefulness are skills our recruits need. Now, how'd you do against your foes? Tier 4, not too shabby. The techs make us test each level of the sim too. I can tell you that way were some real artificial bastards. Good job putting them away. Hell of a job. I might even let you fly me around sometime. No, he isn't so that the plan. Then, looking at your results as a whole, factoring in that you managed to utilize all the tools at your disposal, once you've successfully completed your probationary mission, you could have your UC citizenship after only just five years. Five years? You've been years. hounded for some recruits with experience. What? Says here I can even offer you a bonus along with your signing advance. Citizenship in five years? That's quite impressive. Took me almost nine, thanks to some false starts. You all are You should me. be proud. So, sounds to me like we've got Vanguard material on our hands. If you're interested, we could bring you on as a provisional member today. Get you the credits you've earned, then send you out on your probationary mission. First, though, all UC service people, provisional or otherwise, are required to swear an oath. So... You want to make this official? Commit yourself to the cause of the colonies? It's a big decision. John, you're not about to have my compatriot here sign some kind of contract that sells you their grandmother five years down the line, are you? Officer's honor, Sarah. This is honest work for honest credits. So, you ready to do the deed? Um... Can we do this under the table? I like to operate independently. You're not in the Freestar Collective here. Vanguard keeps its work above board. You want in, you have to do the same as everyone else. And that starts with the oath. All right, then. Fantastic. Then just follow me. It's been a long time since I've been to Mars. Soul system doesn't get a lot of traffic. So I'm the only one being sworn in. And I don't even get a uniform like those other soldiers I saw. All right, 
wouldn't be right doing this where we couldn't see the skies. Now, raise your right hand. The motto of the Vanguard is Supra et Ultra, above and beyond. That is where we serve, beyond the furthest reaches of the United Colonies military, and with honor and duty above reproach. Do you swear to protect and defend the citizens of the United Colonies to the best of your abilities? and to uphold the values of the Vanguard, honor, loyalty, self-reliance in all your actions as a member of the United Colonies Navy? I do. Then let me be the first to officially welcome you to the United Colonies Vanguard. Now, only thing left is getting you that probationary mission. And what I've got is comms repair. Group trying to refurb an old colony war processing plant on Tau Ceti II. Sounds like they'd barely gotten set up when their communications died. Place is as isolated as they come, so Brass wants a vanguard to deliver the repair suite and ensure anyone present is safe and secure. So, can the people of Tau Ceti II count on you? <laughs> of course they can. I am getting paid, right? Oh, that's the spirit. Head down to the spaceport and talk to Crew Chief Harath. He'll get you the repair suite plus your new recruit kit. Oh, and your advance. Give it your all out there. Supra et Ultra. All right, thank you. All right. Let's see if we can't kill two birds with one stone. We'll do this uh, Vanguard mission and check in on that artifact. Come on, Sarah. Let's go.